Here's something I guarantee you did not know about the temp sensor on the E30 instrument cluster. What's up guys, Frank Mancaluso here. Welcome to the channel. We're gonna be talking more engine swap things, things that will be in a lot of good detail in my guide. Today, we're talking about things you probably already know about, but maybe you don't. The temp sensor. What do you not know about the temp sensor? And what is this thing? Stay tuned guys. That's right guys, we have a regular E30 instrument cluster with the temp gauge. This temp gauge works in concert with the single wire sensor that you can find on the M20 thermostat housing. What is this thing you ask? Well that thing and what those numbers are basically resistance values. I got those resistance values, so it basically tells what the resistance is at each one of those. Let me show you how I did it. When you're putting a swapped engine into any old BMW, like an E24, E30, E28, uh, even an E21, you're dealing with an engine that operates at a different optimal temperature range, yet they still need to work with the E30 temp gauge in the cluster. So how do you get that to work? Well, on the E36 and 54 that I did, it was easy because the, I used the same four wire potentiometer for, for engine temperature, the S52. Basically, two wires go to the DME for processing and two of the wires go straight to the cluster. However, the resistance values are way different than the E30 cluster expects to see. So I've taken all of that data, I have a resistance potentiometer that I've wired in and I've identified exactly what those resistance values are for each hash mark on the instrument cluster, which is pretty cool because if you use a lookup table, you will see you can identify exactly how hot the engine is at exactly what hashtag. And if you wanted to, if the engine likes to operate at a higher temperature like the M54 in this E30, you can add resistance to the line to get it to look exactly like it should on a normal swapped car. So for the N54 here, I have a four wire potentiometer for temp engine temperature sensing. Like I said, two go to the DMA, two go to the cluster. We are going to be repurposing those two that would, would have gone to the cluster. And we're gonna be putting in an E30 sensor right here. This is basically a stock E30 sensor and it is on the cool side of the radiator, which is good. This is, that's what we want. We wanna be able to see what is the, end, the coolant temperature going into the engine. So to me, that is acceptable. This is a single wire potentiometer, right? Single wire, the other wire is basically grounded to chassis, which it already is here, so we are good there. That wire then kind of sneaks up and goes into this location here, which is kind of like a weather pack connector, and that is uh, basically goes right into the cluster. So for sake of argument, why don't you assume that the, the wire that I have wired up from the radiator goes straight to the coolant indicator on the instrument cluster as BMW designed it for the E30. Having said that, let's try to manipulate the resistance values on the cluster to get the exact resistance values that we need to see for each of those hash marks on the actual gauge. Because the E30 gauge relies on a single wire potentiometer of very specific resistance values, we need to try to replicate that. Here is the wire that is coming from the gauge, right? This basically goes into the C101, and this is ground. So what we have here is we have a potentiometer. This thing, a potentiometer essentially has three wires. One goes to ground, one goes to power, um, and then the other one has your um, resistance, variable resistance output. For the purposes of this experiment, we are going to basically just use two of those three wires, and we're going to be varying the resistance so that we can identify exactly when, what hashtags that go on, goes on. So what we need to do is turn the car on and we need to hook this up and then we can start playing with it. Key on, okay. That guy is ready to rumble. This is my potentiometer. It's a 1K ohm potentiometer, meaning that any two, these two leads in fact, go from zero to 1000 ohms, which is perfect for the E30 indicator. What we need to do is, see the multimeter there and I don't really know what setting I have it on but just to test here you can see that it's reading right around 145 ohms and if I can do this while, I, while it's moving let's see if I can do this together two hands as I'm twisting the potentiometer it's changing the resistance it's getting higher in this case you can see now it's 0.243 that's basically 243 mil, uh, ohms and it's gonna to continue to go as I continue to turn it higher and higher and higher. So if we were to hook this directly up to the actual 
pretending that this is actually the sensor, you can see how the actual indicator on the cluster changes. So here we go. As you decrease the resistance, the temperature goes up. So I'm decreasing the resistance and I can really fine tune this, right? I can get this right on that hash mark, stop there. I can get it right on the middle hash mark, stop there. Right on that hash mark, oh, I wanna go back to the middle. See, so you can kind of go back and forth, back and forth, which is really awesome. So what I did was I figured out exactly what hash mark I, I wanted to be on and figure out what the resistance is, and then go back to the curve, which I'll talk about in a few minutes, exactly what the temperature of the engine is at that time. So it's pretty neat, and you can basically reverse engineer this. And I'll show you how to actually reverse engineer it by adding resistance to the line if you're using an engine like the N54 that likes to run hotter, yet you don't wanna see the temperature to be in this area the entire time. It's kind of spooky when you're driving and you just don't want to drive knowing that the indicator is at that location, even though it's perfectly normal for an M54 to run hotter than the indicator expects. So here are the values of resistance that I was able to gather from this application. As you can see, the higher resistance of about 325 ohms is right on the blue uh, cold hash mark. Right outside of the blue, it, the resistance goes down to about 122. Then the first 45 degree hash mark is 70, degree, uh, 70 ohms, then the middle is 42, then the resistance just keeps on going down. And actually, as you can see, from 42 ohms down to 14 on the very uh, super hot mark, not a big change in resistance, yet the change from, from super cold to medium is quite a big change. This can help to explain why when an engine gets hot, your M20, your M10, your M18, whatever, on your E30, that when it gets hot, it gets hot fast. So that resistance, a small change in the resistance when it's hot from like 30 ohms to like 30, uh, to, to, to 24 ohms or 25 ohms is like a huge jump in the, in the instrument cluster reading of the temperature. So that's why people freak out when like it just goes right to hot really quick. Quick, and that's because the temperature, the, the gauge is not linear. It's not linear, it's actually an exponential curve. Now, let's talk about the formula that drives that specific sensor and see how we can modify it to our liking in an N54 swap D30. So thanks to our good friends at Rev Limited, I looked up an old thread here back from 2013 that shows that someone had found an, approximate, an approximation formula rather, that finds the resistance based on the temperature and it takes into account uh, E, which is 2.781 or 1.817. And anyway, this is the curve that is typically used for, um, for all resistive film uh, thermistors and basically on the difference between the metals and the, uh, the materials that are used defines, defines these constants that are used as 3842 and this 0.00134. So um, I took this curve and I basically plotted it up here and I, and I, I plotted the E30 versus the E36 temp values. The E36 temp values are tested values and the E30 values are from the approximation curve. Um, and in comparing them, you can see a huge dichotomy between the two in such, in such a way that you can never use the two wire orange one here for the E36 that's meant for the E30. So now I, fi I figured, okay, now that I know what the E30 values are, um, let's play around with um, making sure that the instrument cluster matches what the values of the resistances are. To help illustrate my example of modifying the resistance with a series resistor addition to change the temperature output on the cluster will be shown here. So this is my setup just to test it for illustrating what it looks like on the cluster when you add and remove a 10 ohm resistor to the signal line. 10 ohms at a high temperature, if you look at the chart, will show 10 ohms is about 10 degrees of difference. Readjusted the E30 by adding that 10 ohm resistor I was, talk, um, I was talking about. And you can see that at about 190 degrees, the temperature on the adjusted value actually shows about a 10 degree difference from the regular E30. So when, basically, when the engine's near full operating temperature for an M20, if you put a 10 ohm resistor in there, you're gonna fake it out 10 degrees. 
Um, and if you go higher in the uh, temperature range, you're going to find that there's a 41 here and a 41 here that matches with the yellow arrow. So if you put a 10 ohm resistor, keep that 10 ohm resistor in, as the temperature increases, the, uh, the difference between the temperature at that resistance value changes significantly as well. As here you can see it's a 20 degree difference between 210 and 230. So if you know that, you'll know what the temperature is at full operating at full operating temp of the N54, and you can move on from there. So if I have an engine like this that's running hotter than the cluster expects, then if I put a 10 ohm resistor in line with the signal, it's going to shift that needle just a tiny bit, just enough, so it's not running past half at full hot. And that's really, really important distinction is that you can modify this and change it if you use a different engine in this cluster. Basically, I have my potentiometer here which characterizes the actual sensor on the engine. I have a 10 ohm resistor with a jumper wire here. That white one is jumpered. And here is the 10 ohm resistor in the resistance line to the cluster. So if I were to, I currently have no resistor in there right now. Um, so right now, without the resistor, it's right at halfway. So let me get it exactly to halfway. Real quick. Okay. Now, let's put that 10 ohm resistor in line and you can see how the resistance, how the, the, the needle jumps to the left just a tiny bit. See? That's with the 10 ohm resistor, that's without it. That's with it, that's without it. With it, without it. What a great way to actually get your car to respond and act exactly the way it should when it's swapped with a more modern engine that has different electrical characteristics, huh? Pretty cool stuff. So there you have it guys. Now you know exactly what temperatures the hash marks on the E30 cluster indicate and how to modify them so that when you have a, ho a hotter running engine into the E30, it's not going to be pegged in the three quarter heat range, which usually freaks anybody out. Guys, I hope that I helped you out here on a little bit of knowledge that you might not have known about the E30. My name is Frank Macaluso. Please subscribe, like, comment, and tell your friends about all the stuff that I'm doing here on the Garageaholic channel. I am out of here. Take it easy. Later.